This video has taken me a ridiculous amount of time to create because so much of the information that is out there on this topic is absolute garbage. Especially if you do a quick Google or YouTube search, it is full of misinformation and contradicting facts. Now, I will include legit peer-reviewed sources down in the description. Please feel free to check those out. Now the topic is hard water versus soft water and the impact on your beard. We're gonna get right into the facts of this matter, but first the quick reminders, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Dan C. Bearded. If you're returning, thank you. If you enjoy this content or this topic specifically, please hit a thumbs up on the video. And if you are not already, please consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference on this channel and you can stay up to date with new videos about your beard or someone else's beard. Because sometimes we have ladies that like to look out for their husband or their family members. Hey, everybody is welcome here. Water is considered hard based on the minerals that are in the water. Some common examples would be calcium, magnesium, iron, chlorine, and many others. Now this carries a much higher pH level, which we will really want to consider and talk about in a little bit here. And the super majority of America has hard water. It is very rare that you just naturally to your house have soft water. Now, what is soft water? Soft water has a much higher level of sodium, and that's pretty much it. It's just this really pure water plus the sodium, and this carries a much lower pH level, and it is on the acidic side. Our hair of our beard and our skin, the pH is right in the middle between soft water and hard water, and again, we'll kind of get into those details. Now, soft water can be naturally occurring, even though it's very rare. The most common way that you could possibly have soft water in your house would be through a water softener. Let's break down soft water. Soft water is known for leaving your beard feeling more of that ee -ee -ee squeaky clean. And a big reason behind that is that lower pH level that we mentioned, which carries a more acidic value. Now this has natural cleansing properties of its own. The water actually cleanses your hair and your skin. So with that said, you will want to wash your beard less often when you have that soft water. Also, you want to use less of the actual product rather than just the frequency because a little bit goes a long way. Your beard wash is going to really lather when you have that soft water, but that's not always a good thing. It's going to leave your beard more stripped and your skin more dry. Now, when you use conditioner, which is going to be super important when you have soft water, it actually is harder to get off of the beard. That conditioner is going to latch onto the beard hairs more. So once again, you want to use less quantity of that beard conditioner. And this really goes for any of your in-shower products. If you switch from hard water to soft water, you're going to dial back your shampoo, your body wash, anything that you use that is really, really important. Now, if you have too soft of water, meaning there's a lot of calcium that's in it, it can actually leave your beard looking and feeling greasy, like it would leave this very specific kind of greasy coat and layer over the hair. That's not a good thing either. Hard water really depends on what is actually in your water. There is a huge spectrum of what is considered hard water with all the different minerals and things that could be in there. Now, it's actually really easy to test what you have in your hard water with something called a TDS meter. Now, I will link one in the description. They are fairly inexpensive and pretty reliable, even from Amazon. I think the one that I snagged was like $13, and I'll link that one, and it'll tell you specifically what is in there. Now, there are different courses of action that you would want to take depending on the different minerals, right? If you have something like a high iron concentration, it may be staining and giving an orange or kind of tinted color to the gray, silver, blonde, white hairs. In the same way, if you have a high copper one, it could be turning those hairs green, right? It really depends what's in there. And let me give you a visual. If you have a shower head and you see deposits on there, 
Oftentimes, you can tell what's in there based on the color. If it is an iron-like color, you're going to see that iron. If it is a white color, you're going to maybe have some magnesium in there, and so on. We could go down the list. So it really depends on what's in the water. Now, let's speak in general terms here. Generally speaking, with hard water, it's going to leave your beard feeling dull or damaged and very hard to style. Those same deposits that are on that shower head are going to be building up on your beard as well. Now, this is extremely important that you get a stripping wash two to four times a month based on your water, based on your beard and your personal preferences. I highly, highly recommend a beard bar soap. That is going to do a great job. It's going to have the proper pH level, the proper cleansing and clarifying properties that you need to remove that buildup so your beard can be as healthy as possible, but also, which is important to many people watching this channel, look as good as possible. Hard water offers a lot of issues when it comes to styling and coloring. Luckily, we can address all of those. Let's end with some solutions here. We don't want to just talk about the problems, but we want to offer ways to make the best out of it. Now, both water types are far from perfect. They both have pros. They both have cons. If I had to pick one to keep at all times, I would probably pick soft water, but we do have something that will help both of them. And it is simply a shower head filter. I will link an Amazon link again in the description for you guys. These have different layers of filters that target specific things in the water that are not good for your hair and for your skin, AKA your beard. That's fairly inexpensive, very easy to attach and very simple to use. It doesn't really look bad or anything and it can make a big difference even when you don't realize it. Especially if you've lived in the same area or the same house for a long time, you think that's just how water is. Now, if you've gone on vacation and you've ever felt that difference in a hotel, it's oftentimes regional, right? The mineral deposits depend on where you're at, where you live, what part of the country, what part of the world. Well, that filter can bring everybody back to kind of an even playing field and you can really see a difference with how the products lather, with the way your beard styles, your skin feels. It really is worth a shot for a couple of inexpensive solutions and really just some things to be aware of. So to end here, do you have any questions or any add-ons? Is there something that you know that I did not cover or something that you would like to go into more detail about? I would love if you could add to that. Or is there something you're wondering, something I didn't cover enough, something that you're confused on? Please let me know. I would love to do my job a little bit better by answering those questions. So thank you guys for watching. Again, if you did not, consider hitting a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I love this stuff. I work really hard at it, but I enjoy every second of it. Dancy bearded, stay bearded, and stay positive.